Welcome to the video. This is the third and last part of the depression series. In this video, we are going to look at Napoleon's horoscope. And then we will look at his early life. If you don't know the basics of Vedic Astrology and if you want to learn the basics of Astrology first, please go to the link below in the description box and see the two-part video, Learn Vedic Astrology in One Day and the Vimshotari Dasha videos. For 10 long years, he was the world's most powerful man. He changed the face of Europe. He changed the life of every person in Europe. That man was Napoleon Bonaparte. He was born on 15 August 1769, 11 am in the morning, in the tiny island of Corsica near Italy. He was born in Libra Ascendant or Tula Lagna. His moon is in Uttrashada Nakshatra. Moon in Uttrashada made him an extremely independent person. You can see that Saturn is directly looking at Moon. This caused him depression for some years. His fourth Lord Saturn in 10th house made him a very popular leader. Fifth Lord denotes knowledge. Fifth Lord Saturn in 10th house shows that he had good knowledge in politics and administration. Sun and Mars combination shows his egoistic character. Napoleon is known for his dominating attitude. Venus Ketu combination shows that he was loyal towards his first wife, but at the same time, Venus Ketu combination caused separation from his wife, and he was forcibly separated from his second wife too. Napoleon was born in a small island called Corsica between France and Italy. He was born to Corsican parents who were both born in minor noble families. His father, Carlo Bonaparte, was son of a Corsican nobleman. His mother, Leticia, was also born in a noble family. Both of Napoleon's parents were members of Corsican resistance movement, which was fighting against the French occupation. In the year 1764, the French forces occupied the island of Corsica. 1768, France proclaimed Corsica as a new province. In order to fight against the French occupation, the Corsicans organized a resistance movement under the leadership of Pascal Paoli. Pascal Paoli was proclaimed as the commander-in-chief of the Corsican Republican resistance. After some initial success, the Corsicans were badly defeated by the French forces in the decisive battle of Ponte Nuovo. After this massive defeat, Pascal Paoli fled from Corsica and took refuge in England. Paoli became very close with the British. During the first few years of French occupation, Carlo Bonaparte worked as a personal assistant to Paoli. Later, he became very close with the French to develop his own career. When Napoleon was born, his father was the advocate in the Superior Council of Corsica. His career grew rapidly. In 1778, he became Corsica's representative in the court of King Louis XVI of France. Immediately, Carlo Bonaparte shifted with his entire family to France. Carlo Bonaparte wanted his children to achieve the status of nobility in the royal court of France. Carlo Bonaparte used his political connections to get scholarship for Napoleon to study in Royal Military School. This was a prestigious institution where only the children from noble families studied. Very soon, Napoleon found himself interacting with the children of nobility. 
Napoleon spoke French with a strong Corsican accent which made him an odd man out. Most of his French classmates started making fun of Napoleon because of his heavy Corsican accent. Also, Napoleon was not as rich as his classmates. He couldn't adjust to the new royal lifestyle. Napoleon felt like he was living in an alien world. Napoleon felt very lonely and depressed. He couldn't identify himself as a French citizen. He started to hate the French people and he started to hate anything that is French. He saw himself as a Corsican citizen. He started to develop a deep hatred towards French aristocrats. Napoleon found refuge in books. He started to spend most of his free time reading about the lives of great historical figures. He became very fascinated in European history. He was very impressed by the history of the Roman Empire, especially the story of Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great fascinated him to a great extent. Very soon, he started researching about the military tactics of these greatest commanders. He was so impressed by ancient history that he wanted to become a writer, a writer of historical books. Even at that early age, he wrote a book about the history of Corsica, his homeland. At the same time, big trouble was brewing in France. In the year 1789, protests started breaking out all over France. Majority of French population were so angry at the lavish lifestyle of the royal family. For 10 years, France was gripped in a severe financial crisis. Rapid population growth coupled with bad harvest led to a sharp increase in food prices. High levels of unemployment severely worsened the situation. The French royal government was deeply in debt, so they couldn't do much. People's anger boiled over to the streets. Violence spread all over the country. In the prolonged unrest that followed, the monarchy was abolished. And now, France was proclaimed as a republic. Napoleon's deep hatred for the aristocracy made him support the revolution. He felt attracted by the promise of equality to all people. Now, he felt very comfortable being part of the French society. That's because he could identify himself with the anger of the French people. Now, Napoleon became a captain in the French Revolutionary Army. 1792, the deposed king and his wife were both tried for treason. Soon they were found guilty and they were both beheaded in public. The public execution of the royal family had sent shockwaves all over Europe. All over Europe, the horrified conservatives called for the destruction of Republic of France. Soon. France was attacked by a coalition of Britain, Spain, Portugal, Austria, Prussia, Naples and Tuscany. In the meantime, Pascal Paoli returned to Corsica with the help of British troops. Because he was so close to the British, Pascal Paoli supported the British cause of destroying the French Republic. Now, Pascal Paoli and Napoleon found each other on the opposite sides. Being a strong supporter of French Republic, Napoleon and his family felt threatened by Pascal Paoli. Napoleon and his family were forced to flee Corsica to mainland France. Napoleon felt deeply betrayed. He felt that he was stabbed in the back by fellow Corsicans. Now he no longer believed in Corsican homeland. Now the transformation was complete. Napoleon became totally French. 1794, the royalist supporters started a rebellion against the Republic. The royalists started marching on Paris. Napoleon was given the task of stopping the protesters from reaching Paris. At this time, Napoleon was captain of artillery unit. Before we continue, I would like to request you to subscribe to this channel. You will find more interesting videos in the upcoming days. Please subscribe to the channel. 
Now, as the royalist supporters marched on to Paris, Napoleon ordered his unit to open fire. The rebels were scattered within minutes. Now, oh, Napoleon was promoted as major. Now comes the biggest turning point of his life. The Battle of Toulon. Toulon is a French harbour on southern coast. The Toulon harbour was captured by the British Navy in preparation for a future invasion. When the French forces arrived, they found that the harbour was well protected on all sides. Napoleon studied the area very carefully. He came upon a very brilliant plan. He wanted to concentrate all the French troops and capture one particular position from where it will be easy to target British ships. And also he offered to lead the attack. With full vigour, Napoleon led his men in a forward charge. The British troops defended their positions very fiercely. The fighting was fierce. Despite being stabbed in the thigh, Napoleon led his men from the front. After a stiff fight, Napoleon and his men were able to capture the British position. They also captured some of British artillery. Now, they turned all the firepower towards the British ships. British naval ships were blasted one by one. The remaining British ships had no other option except to retreat. The French had won the battle. Napoleon was promoted as Brigadier General. Very soon he became the Commander-in-Chief. Few years later, in a military coup, he seized power and became the Emperor of France. And the rest is history.